Hello, boys and girls, and welcome once again to Bible Gems. You know, you don't have to go to a place just like this to learn lessons from God's Word. All you have to do is open up the pages of the Bible and with a relative or a friend, read those stories which are full of lessons for each one of us. And I'm, I'm ready to find out a clue about what today's story is going to be. Where's that Bible chest that has a clue for us? Do you see it around here somewhere? There it is, right over there. Caleb, why don't you go on over and see what we have inside that will let us know what we're going to learn about today. Let's see what it is that he's pulling out of there. Oh, I can't tell if it's heavy or not. He's got a couple of things in his hand. Go ahead and bring those over. Let's see, what do you got there for us? Wood and a Bible gem. You got a Bible gem there and you got two pieces of wood. D does this look like the kind of wood that maybe we'd be using to build something with? Maybe a house or a boat? No. no? Oh, so what might we do with, with pieces of wood that look like this? Use it for sacrifice or bonfire. And a bonfire? We certainly could build a fire out of, out of pieces of wood. This, this could be firewood, couldn't it? I'd probably want a few more pieces to build a fire out of. I wonder if there's stories in the Bible where people had to build a fire. How many of you have tried to build a fire before? Maybe you went camping and were, were cooking something over the fire. It kind of takes a little bit of work and, and you might have to go around and collect the wood and, and put it together. Let's see if there's this uh, Bible gem in front of us has uh, an explanation that helps us understand what this firewood might be for. Let's see, we're looking in the book of Genesis. That's where today's Bible gem is from. It's in chapter 22, verse 3. And here's what it says, kids. Early in the morning, Abraham got up and saddled his donkey. So it sounds like this story is going to begin with somebody sound asleep. And that might be what's happening right here. Let's see. It says that Abraham took Isaac and two servants with him. He cut the wood for the sacrifice. Well, that explains what this wood might be for. They must be using it for a sacrifice. I think that's what Caleb said earlier, too. Then they went to the place God had told them to go. So as we get into today's Bible gem, we're going to see that they're going to use the wood for a sacrifice. Have any of you heard of a sacrifice before? Well, I think today's story is going to teach us a little bit more about what a sacrifice is all about. Are you ready to find out what happens in this story today? Yes! Yeah! So am I. So let's listen to our storytellers show us what happened in God's Word. Take now your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah, and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. Lord, not my promised son. Abraham was distressed. You see, they had waited many, many years for this promised son Isaac to come. And now that he had him, he and Sarah, now the Lord was asking him to do something so, so, so careless. Why would he have to sacrifice his son? But there was a time before when Abraham was 75 years old that God had called Abraham to be a chosen man for God. And Abraham was told by God the following. You will have a son of your own who will be your heir. Look up into the sky and count the stars if you can. That's how many descendants you will have. And so Abraham heard this promise, and God had repeated it to him later on in life. But at this time, Abraham thought, well, I'm too old to have a son at 99 years old. Surely he couldn't have a son. He and his, Sarah, his wife Sarah were very old. And so at this time, Abraham, he laughed and said, <laughs> how, 
could I have a son at this time? Now Abraham decided with his wife Sarah that in order for them to fulfill the, the promise of God, they would have to come up with a plan of their own. Is it good for us to come up with a plan that God doesn't approve of? No. No, no. And so they wanted to fulfill the promise of God themselves. And so Abraham and Sarah decided that Abraham would marry the, the, the servant of Sarah named Hagar. And when they got married, they had a son named Ishmael. But unfortunately, Ishmael did not have the character that God wanted for this promised son. So one day Abraham was told by the Lord that instead of Ishmael, he would be given Isaac uh, in, uh, this time next year as his promised son. And Abraham spoke to the Lord saying, Lord, couldn't Ishmael just be the promised son? Oh, but the Lord responded to Abraham saying, No, Sarah your wife will give birth to a son for you. You will name him Isaac, and I will make my covenant with him. This time next year, you will have Isaac. And so Abraham had nothing to worry about. As long as he trusted in God, everything would be okay. And so Abraham and Sarah, against all odds, had this promised son, Isaac. And once they had this son, oh, he was their pride and joy. But unfortunately, Hagar and Ishmael became jealous. And they hated Sarah and Isaac, her son. And Sarah saw the way that they were being treated by Hagar and Ishmael. And she said to Abraham, send away this bondwoman and her son, for they shall not rule with my son Isaac. And so God spoke to Abraham and told him to listen to the voice of his wife. And how do you think Abraham felt? Was he happy to send away his son? No. No. His heart was breaking. But he listened to the voice of the Lord and sent Ishmael and Hagar away into the wilderness. And God provided for them. But then Abraham and his wife, they raised their, their, their son with love. And they cared for him. And they thought that nothing bad would ever happen to him. And as we saw earlier, they came to a time when God saw fit to test them. And why do you think he tested them? Was it because he hated Abraham? No. no, he loved him. And he wanted to test Abraham to see if he would truly be the father of the chosen nation that he wanted him to be. And so God told him to take his son Isaac and to take him to the mountains of Mor Moriah and to sacrifice him there. And so Abraham got Isaac and his two servants and they came and they made their long journey across the desert. Oh, it was a weary journey. You and guys wait here. Me and the lad will go up the mountain to worship, but we'll be back. Stay here. And so the servants remained there as Abraham and Isaac Father, continued their journey. Father, we have the wood for the altar, but where's the sacrifice? Don't worry, my son. God will provide. And so they continued their journey. But you can imagine that Abraham, he was, he was hurting on the inside. Although Isaac did not yet know what was taking place, Abraham knew every detail and he knew the promise of the Lord that he would have a nation of descendants through this son. So how was God going to bring a nation if he was going to kill Isaac? But Abraham trusted God. And as they got up to the top of the mountain, Abraham told his son Isaac what the Lord had told him to do. And Isaac said to his father, I will honor you and I will honor God. Let us do what God has said. And so Isaac laid upon the altar in obedience to the Lord and to his father. And as, he, as Abraham prepared himself to do the very thing that the Lord asked him to do, a voice came from heaven saying, Abraham, Abraham, here am I. Do not lay your hand on the boy or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, since you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. Oh, and as Abraham 
felt this calm come upon him, he looked, and behold, there was a ram <laughs> caught in the thicket. God had provided an offering for them. Oh, this is such a beautiful story because this is how Abraham became the father of a nation of chosen people. Chosen not because they were more special than others, but they were chosen because they listened to and obeyed the voice of God. Boys and girls, we have the chance to listen to and obey the voice of God ourselves. It's not hard, but it requires for us to make a sacrifice. Not like Abraham with his son Isaac, but we have to sacrifice self. Self wants to rise up and say, I don't want to do this. But the Lord says, submit to God. And you resist the devil and he will flee from you. So remember, you are chosen by God if you listen to and obey the voice of the Lord. It must have been difficult for Abraham to make that decision and do what God asked. And we can see that Abraham trusted God with everything in his life. Let's hear some questions about this story and see if we can remember what happened. The first question is this. How old was Abraham when God promised him that he would be the father of a chosen nation? I see Rosalind has her hand up over there. Was he 35 years old, 55, or 75 years old? 75. Yeah, he was 75 years old, and he and his wife didn't have any children, and oh, they wanted a child. And so when God made that promise, it was good news, and they knew that a little baby, a promised son, would come. Now, who was that promised son? What was the name of that promised son? Alexia Sharon, was it, was it Joseph? Was it Isaac, or was it Ishmael? Isaac. It was Isaac. Now, all three of those were relatives of Abraham, but Isaac was the promised son that God had chosen for him. The last question is this. Why is someone considered to be chosen by God? Is it because they listen to and obey the voice of God? Or is it because they're so brave or because they ask God to let them be a leader? Sophia. Because they listen to God. Because they listen to God's voice and they obey it, just like Abraham did. Now, when he heard the voice of God, he could have pretended to be asleep or he could have said, I don't understand or let me do that later. But he said, I want to do what God asks me to do, even if it's confusing and even if it's something that I don't understand. But what he did, what Abraham and Isaac did, it set an example to us of the true promised son. And that is Jesus. And he comes and he's the sacrifice for our sins. I'm so thankful for this story here in every Bible gem that reminds us how precious we are to to God. Come again for the next Bible gem. We'll see you all next time.